Luther Vandross is frustrated with the queen, okay? Because in his mind, he like, wait a minute, hold it. Jump to it is a smash, okay? Lady, you know I could just say goodbye to you and take Jump to it back and put it on my next album. You know that, right? You do know that, right? bugs hello there bellas if you have not already done so please remember to like share to facebook and subscribe because it is so important to our book club and if you are not a part of our book club please remember to hit the patreon link below and or the join button here on facebook I'm sorry, on YouTube, and for a small monthly $5 fee, you can be privy to all the shenanigans before YouTube gets it, if YouTube gets it. Now, let's talk about um, David Ritz, The Life of Aretha Franklin, part, I wrote this down, hold on y'all, hold on y'all, 22. So, where we left off, Aretha Franklin is two albums in at Arista. Okay, the last album she did with the dude named Arif Martin. Okay, it wasn't what they projected it to be. Okay, Arif Martin said because the only hit was a minor hit, Love All the Hurt Away. Y'all know that song, the duet with um, Aretha Franklin and George Benson. Cause you. And I were meant to be lovers. This century's over for us. There's no other. We're finally at the rainbow's end. So Arif knew that what he was doing wasn't working for Aretha. Okay? So he knew that he wouldn't be called back to work with her on a third album. It wasn't until Aretha Franklin collabed with Luther Vandross that she was going and popping again. So when Luther Vandross sat down with David Ritz to tell his side of the story about how him and Aretha came up with the hits, Luther explained to David Ritz that it was an epic story. If you wanna hear about it, here it go. So it's 1981. Mm -hmm. And never too much, his first single came out and it was a hit. That mug went gold, and he was in the money, right? But how he puts it, puts it is that, okay, he come from the projects in New York, right? But he been making money a long time in the disco scene. He said that he was singing backgrounds in the disco scene for a while and jingles, okay? Him and Patty Austin were probably the most successful studio singers of all time. And he was in Chic. I didn't know that. He said he was the one that said, yowza, yowza, yowza. Didn't know that. So he's okay. still sitting down with David Ritz. And he tells the story about how he was being interviewed by Rolling Stone Magazine. Okay? And he told Rolling Stone Magazine who influenced him in his career. And that he would love to work with this woman, Aretha Franklin. Who knew? that that day would be the very next day. Clive Davis called me and said, are you serious about working with Aretha? He said, hell yeah, that's Aretha Franklin. Luther said that nobody in their right mind would ever pass up on Aretha Franklin. She's the queen of soul. I mean, to me, that would put a pen in a person's career if you can produce a hit with queen of soul. And don't forget, she's like 40 now. Okay, that's basically unheard of when you can have a hot streak in uh, your earlier years and then come back out in your 40s. You know how they do us black women. Once we get past a certain age, they give us the 30. Then we old news. 
That's why I say, ladies, if you ain't happy with yourself, you better take your ass down there to Dr. Miami and get some shit done to yourself. Don't sit around here and let these people tell you, you owe. You better go to the makeup counter. You better get your hair done, do everything. Dye that shit gold, because you know how us women get, once we get past a certain age, we like to put that blonde shit in our hair. Not because you niggas that be like, I hate black women with blonde hair, you dumb dumbs. You do it. We do it because it helps us look younger it gives us a glow when our hair is blonde not because we trying to be white it's because we trying to look younger dumb dumb i can't stand when niggas talk on shit they don't know but anyway i digress i was like is you serious luther vans rose do you want to come work with aretha hell yeah he said a week later aretha franklin was on the call on the phone mr vans rose is this aretha the phone call between aretha franklin and luther vans rose went like this mr vans rose do you have any songs available for me? Luther Vandross said, not yet, Queen. Just give me a minute. Okay, well, when you have those songs together, contact me. Now, Luther Vandross was not insulted because after all, it is the Queen, okay? And after all, um, you know, you got to audition for the Queen. You just can't just walk in and be like, hey, here go a song. No, she didn't already had two bad albums on Ursta. She ain't playing no games with these niggas. So Marcus Miller came up with the track, mm -hmm. the beat, the groove. And Luther Vandross came in and put his spit shine on it, came up with the words. He wasn't looking for anything too deep. He just wanted something lighthearted. But anyway, he said the words jumped off the track, hence the title. Jump, jump, jump to it. Aretha Franklin heard it and loved it. She was ready to roll, but the challenge was my schedule. I was touring heavily behind my own album, gigs, practicing every weekend. I had to fly in and out of LA, to Chicago, to Atlanta, to Miami. It was hard for us to get together and do the work. While he's flying around the world taking care of things, he is also working with his label mate producing Cheryl Lynn in LA. But the sessions with Aretha began with the same formality. So what? eventually Aretha finally indicated that I should call her Aretha and not Miss Franklin. We bonded over food. We loved the same stuff. Everything greasy and sweet. We struggle with the same overeating addiction. Okay? That's a that mm. look, I don't, I, I don't really talk about her um, weight issues because I feel like it shouldn't be an issue. She's human, okay. And I mean, Joe, I just, I don't know. The only issue that I have with her weight is, you know, sometimes them outfits and them titties don't work. Right. But, I mean, I, I, I don't have no problems with the queen weight. She human. She go up and down just like the rest of us. I'm struggling every day to get to my target weight. So. Let's get to the uh, disagreements, okay? What Luther Vandross said was that Aretha Franklin does not like to be critiqued or like her vocals critiqued, okay? That's not what you're not going to do, okay? Luther Vandross said, okay, it's understandable she is a queen, right? But Luther Vandross and the dude Marcus Miller had four songs that they knew was going to be the grooves, okay? But Aretha wanted to produce, Okay, because Aretha's been producing a long time. She knew how to get that, you know, that soul R&B production together. Because whenever she gets in the studio, back in the 70s, Clarence, back in the 70s, whenever she got in the studio with a producer, the producer would just sit back and be like, we really know what to do. It's her sound. But that shit ain't working no more in the 80s. And that's what Luther Vandross was trying to tell her. Okay, uh, Riri, listen. This is my song, and we're going to do it my way. We, we say, I don't give a fuck who you are. I'm Aretha Franklin. Oh, Luther Vandross is frustrated with the queen, okay? Because in his mind, he like, wait a minute, hold it. Jump to it is a smash, okay? Lady, you know I could just say goodbye to you and take jump to it back and put it on my next album. You know that, right? You, you, you do know that, right? I don't give a fuck if you the queen of soul, the queen of dirt, the queen of heaven, the queen of... Th this is my song, and I need it to be done my way. The next disagreement was, you know how Jump To It has an extended intro, okay? When I tell you that groove, listen, late 70s, early 80s, we wanted to 
dance, okay? So Luther Vandross is trying to explain to Aretha Franklin, listen, girl, these people want to dance, and that groove hits. Let the groove play. Aretha Franklin said, no, the people are going to get disenchanted if they wait that long. Luther Vandross said, trust me, they're going to be grooving, waiting for your voice to hit. You know, them two going back and forth over the intro, okay, or the uh, extended instrumental intro, okay? Aretha Franklin goes for the juggler and said, listen, Vandross, who got the most hits? Vandross said, that would be you, queen, but who has the latest hit? Ooh! Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, 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 yeah! Girl, I got to go. You know, eventually she gave in, okay? Trust the Luther. That's the only thing I can say, trust the Luther. Luther don't go wrong never, okay? Trust the Luther. So in the summer of 1982, Jump To It jumped to the top of the R&B charts, okay? It was her first hit record since her collaboration with Curtis Mayfield. Ooh, my baby calls, I gotta jump to it. Hey. So Luther Vandross continues to talk to David Ritz about he and uh, Aretha Franklin's personal relationship. He said that as a person growing up, he kept in touch with Aretha Franklin's life through Ebony and Jet magazine, okay? And the way that Aretha portrayed herself through those magazines was nothing like who she really was. Luther Vandross said that she was just an unhappy and lonely woman. I'm saying to myself, wait a minute, she ain't got a boyfriend somewhere? Where's the boyfriend? Who's the boyfriend? So, Luther brought a lot of light back into Aretha's career, said Cecil. And there's no doubt he gave her a contemporary sound. Can't stress enough the importance of this. We've seen that the move from Atlantic to Arista was a good one. It was Clive who identified Luther, and it was Luther who had what the kids wanted. Luther said that he and Riri were working together while Aretha Franklin's dad was still in a coma, okay? He said outside of that, he could tell that there were also problems at home with her marriage to Glenn Turman. Okay, that might be why he said that the lady was unhappy and lonely. And on top of that, Luther Vandross said that Aretha Franklin was also fighting with her sisters. Now, Irma chimes in and says, well, the problem between me and Riri was this, okay? Riri was accusing me of not getting the best care for their father. Irma is like, listen, I understand that you're trying to hold on to our daddy, but basically... Uh, Riri, don't blame me because things aren't going the way you want them to go as far as dad. I'm doing the very best I can while you out there on the road. Now, yeah. on August 9th, Jet Magazine, nah, Jet Magazine, them niggas. But anyway, Jet Magazine had did an article with Aretha Franklin. Aretha Franklin only gave positive news about her father, that he is in good spirits, and his recovery is soon to come. Aretha Franklin said that she could see her father smile and facial expressions. And sisters said that none of that was going on. The doctors had already said that the father was not going to wake up. Aretha, despite all the information that was given to her, you know, she's believing in miracles, but baby... That miracle didn't happen with this one. So on August 23rd, Jet reported that the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin, and Glenn Turman were in trouble. Mm. Jet motherfucker, Jet Magazine. Aretha Franklin's brother, Cecil, said that um, both Glenn Turman and Aretha Franklin were good people. Okay, they uh, both come from the same industry, entertainment world. The problem was that um, Aretha Franklin lived in a dream world, okay? She thought that everything was princes, you know, white carriages and, you know, petals and unicorns, right? But in reality, Cecil said that, this was what Cecil said, was that Aretha Franklin is really not built for a long-term relationship, at least not in a marriage, okay? Because we do know that she did have some uh, boyfriends along the way that she stayed with for a while, but when it came down to Glenn Turman, I don't know. I think she just wanted to just have preach in her bed. I mean, I don't blame her, you know, but 
So once Aretha Franklin moved back to the family home in Detroit, her sister Carolyn said to David Ritz that Aretha was lunching, okay? She put bigger bars on the windows and changed the locks on the doors and hired security. Okay. Nonetheless, Aretha thought that being in such close proximity with her father would re-energize her. Okay. Now, it's time to work again. Aretha Franklin got on a plane to L.A. to work on her second album with Luther Vandross. Luther said that uh, it was obvious that Aretha Franklin was stressed out. Okay. And he also said that her being back home with her father while he's in a coma did not help the situation. Okay. He said that the studio sessions were horrible. Aretha was snapping at him for every little suggestion that he made. Now, again, we're dealing with the same issues with Aretha Franklin. She wants to be in control of production. Answer no. Luther Vandross says that these are my songs with Marcus Miller, and we know what the heck is best for our music. Aretha going back and forth with Luther Vandross. You know what? Luther say, fuck it then. You know what? I'm done. Bye. See you later. Bye. Toodles, Riri. I'm not working with you no more, bitch. You better tell Clive that you warned it, that we're not working together no more because it ain't going to happen. Luther Vandross said that his second album, Forever, For Always, For Love, had gone gold. And he ain't got nothing to lose. Fuck it then, Riri. You don't want to act right? Go, bitch. Go. Bye. Tell your mammy. Go tell Clive we done over here. She ran and told Clive. Okay. Crying of He won't leave me alone. He won't give me my way. Clive came back to the studio as Luther Vandross was packing his shit. Like, I don't have to take this BS from nobody. I am Luther and the Vandross. Yes, that is Aretha the Franklin. But I am Luther the Vandross. Okay. Right. Clive comes back into the studio. Uh, Luther, can you apologize? Answer no. Why should I have to apologize? She the one snapping all in my face. Clive say, there's a whole bunch of money in it for you. I already got money, Clive. I already got money. I ain't got to take this bullshit from her. I already proven myself to her. Why the hell should I have to prove myself again to her? Anyway, Luther apologize. I'm sorry, Riri. He ain't sorry for real. He just was doing it so he can get his ass in the studio and go to the next place where he wanted to go. But he apologized and they did the album. Now, Aretha's version of the studio session went like this. Luther Vandross was mean to me. He was a bully. And I got so upset that I got on a plane and went back home to Detroit. Now, the problem is, because it's always a problem, that the plane that she got on to get her ass back to Detroit, oh, that turbulence was scary. She couldn't handle it. She was, oh, my God, she was scared. Now, me, with plane rides, turbulence don't mean nothing to me, y'all. You know, I know some people get scary, but turbulence, that shit rocks me to sleep, okay? People be like, oh, oh, and I'm like, fuck, bitch, you waking me up. But it bothered Aretha so much that she said, oh, no, fuck them planes. Fuck them planes. Now, money became a central fear, said Ruth Bowman. She claimed that Arista was extremely slow in paying royalties on her recent hits. Her cash flow had stopped. Her decision to stop flying meant the cancellation of several dates that she had asked me to book her for. It Ruth, when you gonna stop fucking with Riri, girl? Riri will throw you in a trick bag, girl. Okay, fool me once, that's my, your fault. Fool me 972 goddamn times, it's still your fault. Anyway, okay. because she not flying no more, she had to cancel several shows, okay, which cost her a fortune. So that's the problem. Riri, the problem is that you keep booking these shows and canceling them. Who the hell got cancellation funds just sitting around just to pay motherfuckers because I told you I was going to do it and then I'm not. I'm lost. I'm lost. Now, keep in mind, also with money. She is still taking care of her father back home to keep him alive. I think they said the cost of it was like $1,200 a day or a week. Which one was it? But anyway, it was a lot of money for the 80s, okay? So she came up with 
um, a ball for celebrities. Okay? So because of her financial woes with herself and that it cost actually $2,500 a week to care for her father, she came up with the idea of the celebrity ball. Jet Magazine reported in its November 7th issue that Aretha Franklin was hosting or sponsoring the second annual artist ball to benefit her comatose father. So in November 1983, the same month, Jesse Jackson announced his bid for the presidency of the United States. An article in JET reported R-E-S-P-E-C-T. That's what Queen of Soul Aretha Franklin says she wants from Arista Records. Now this is the thing. Oh, I forgot to put my glasses back on. Hold on. This is the thing, okay? Um, Arista, Arista or at least Clive was saying to Cecil, whenever Cecil would be like, Clive, look, uh, Riri is saying she's not getting her money. Clive say, I'm sorry, but that's not true, brother. She's getting her money. Cecil looked into it and found out that because Aretha had a uh, propensity to switch around banks account banks when she got upset, okay, motherfucker, I'm Aretha Franklin. You ain't doing what I want you to do. Oh, you pulled out too much money, bro. You know how we do. When they keep hitting us with them NSF fees, oh my God, we get pissed. We like, fuck this bank. You know how it be, you know, when them NSF fees be pulling a pound up on them. But anyway, I don't know if that's what happened with Aretha Franklin, but I don't know no other reason as to why a woman would keep switching from bank to bank to bank to bank, okay? So that's the problem, okay? And she, because she's not organized, she would not update Clive and them down to the human resources and let them know, okay, this is my new bank. Put my new money in my new bank. So the, the royalty checks had been released. It was just that she didn't know where they were because she jumped around so, to so many different banks. So being the gentleman that Clive Davis is, okay, gentleman. Like, I don't think he's a Like, Clive Davis to me seems like, like if you was to ever let him spend a night over your house, you know what I'm saying? Like, you would have to lock your door because Clive Davis seemed like the type of dude that would sneak into your room and suck your husband's dick or something, you know, while y'all sleep. Like, I don't know, but they called him a... Cecil called him a, a gentleman, okay? But, you know, I digress. But anyway, he said that Clive Davis, being the gentleman that he is, he uh, did not hold that against Aretha Franklin, throughout her career at Arista. Cecil okay. said that finances have always been a problem for his sister, okay? And so has romance. So here we are in these roots. Aretha Franklin called him Mr. Mystique. She said that their affair started in the 60s and went on through the 80s, overlapping her relationships with Dennis Edwards, Ken Cunningham, and Glenn Turman. She insisted that no one knew his identity, not even the members of her family. She claimed their affair was rekindled shortly after her return to Detroit. Riri, so you sitting here and you telling the jet that every man that you associated yourself with publicly, you've been cheating on him with some dude named, what's his name, Mr. Mystique? Is that what you telling me, girl? Child bank. At any rate, love bugs, if you have not already done so, please remember to like, share, and subscribe because it is so important to our success here on the YouTube. Now, remember this. The same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down. My naysayers, my patron loves. You babies, have a good